Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 547. That's 547 of the Agostino Zynga show. Hope you're doing well wherever this show may find you. Wherever it's finding you, hope you're healthy, hope you're somewhat okay, happy to some extent, and just living the best life that you can live given the current circumstances you know uh, it's given the current circumstances given the current shebang you know what time it is man i'm gonna skip all the usual promo bits you know what the deal is you know where you're viewing this you know what you're hearing this do as you please and we're just gonna strip straight into it you know what i mean we're not gonna waste any time we're just gonna jump right into it jump right into it um <clears throat> as you can tell <clears throat> wow as you can tell, hay fever has been kicking my ass. Or not, well, allergies have been kicking my ass still. I haven't been buying my allergy tablets, so I had to go back and obviously get them. The little claritine things. Um, yeah, annoying. Well, annoying. Really annoying. I'm not going to lie. Allergies are the worst thing ever, especially for someone like myself who never had them when I was young. And then suddenly, as soon as I become an adult or I'm able to grow a beard, bang, I get hit in the head with flipping allergies. It's one of the most annoying things that could ever happen to a man, especially someone like myself who's... You know, I'm not the most, um, what do we call it? I don't remember a lot of things. I tend to forget stuff, as you can tell. <laughs> um, I don't tend to put the, those kind of things as being the priority. I miss out on certain things. So, of course, when those things happen to me and I get left behind in that way, I'm, yeah, I'm not feeling in a good way. But, hey, I'm back now, ready to go, ready to pod, ready to do the thing, live my life, live free, live fast, and do my vibe. Um is it me maybe i'm only it's only i is it me or is it being nowadays it's, i'm finding it a lot more difficult to finish or even to begin series i downloaded the first season of yellowstone because it's gotten some good reviews and people seem to really like it and it essentially seems like cowboys this essentially seems like a um what's it called it a sons of anarchy versions of cowboy v indians so it seems pretty decent and something that i would be clearly into um not the most highbrow of television but entertaining enough to kind of occupy a few hours in the evening but i can't get going i've watched like two episodes and i'm stuck usually when i download seasons of shows i can get through a season in maybe a week bang it out hour after hour boom 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 especially nowadays where I usually just skip by all the lovey dubby stuff, you know what I mean? All the nonsense kind of discourse I don't really need, especially with the kind of auxiliary ca um, uh, characters and whatnot, and just get straight to the, the bits I need to kind of remember or the bits that kind of are the most pivotal moments in maybe the series, which there maybe are about three or four, so you can skip a lot of it. But wow, man, I'm finding it really difficult to finish this series. I'm not going to lie. Or even, yeah, or even yeah, finish it, and even or even to begin it, because I think two episodes isn't really enough to really get a gist of what's basically going on. But I suppose people say it gets better, actually. Season one isn't even the best season. So, but yeah, I'm finding it difficult to start, man. I really am. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because uh, life has returned back to some sort of less of normality here in the UK. We can go out and stuff. So maybe you don't want to waste the time watching stuff on your laptop when you could just maybe go outdoors or you know do other things like browsing twitter and shit like it's funny because i stopped posting on instagram because i wanted to kind of have a break from the app and obviously when i come back i want to be able to put more work on there and just not just frivolous stuff well actually no i want to do a mix i want to put any idea and every idea up on there that i want to execute or that I've executed as well as my work but i want to have a better kind of relationship with yeah because i wasn't really enjoying it because it was a bit crap because it basically turned into a, a stories app isn't it? and i don't want to be on people's stories on their history looking at their stuff i just don't care and it's a weird thing to say right i don't really care enough but i also don't want to have my name on your history thing as if i'm looking into your life and preying i just just feels gross to me so i kind of want to go back to the, the kind of classic instagram um approach where you just upload bare pictures of yourself on nights out eating food some funny ornament you saw outdoors a funny sign the starbucks barista spelling your name wrong like all this nonsense that people used to upload back in there i want to go back to that so i decided to kind of give myself a break but now i'm basically turning it, twitter into my instagram by uploading nonsense stuff like i went to the gym uploaded a picture of my hand covered in chalk and what song i was listening to on a day the place that i went to go run some plates that i use when i was the, that doing what power lifts and whatnot it's like who cares about that no one cares but i just share it anyway or unsolicited hot takes I, i'm trying to do i'm trying to be that guy and I hate hot take people. 
hot take people are so annoying they always kind of got a crazy hot take a contrarian view just for the sake of being contrarian so they can stir debate it's like go away i remember i knew one guy who used to do that quite often and i'm pretty sure he probably does it on twitter too he's doing real life though he used to just say stuff that would get girls to engage and then use that as a kind of way to kind of bait them in so you can maybe try and seduce them it was like such the cringiest thing ever it's kind of the male equivalent which usually most dudes hate when that dude who kind of tries to embarrass you in front of other girls in order to kind of get you know into their good graces which i never understood i'm not sure if that even actually works do girls are girls impressed when you like mug off your friend in front of them i guess if they like you already it doesn't matter but if they're just trying to decide who in a group that they want to fuck like do they care if you are embarrassing your friend in front of them probably not in it it probably makes you look worse but you know those type of dudes they exist in a whole nother universe i don't even want to try and try and psychoanalyze them because they don't have the time nor the patience or the care but yeah that's what i've been thinking about um what else i've been thinking about um that's it really isn't it nothing else to think about really like i said the next few months are gonna be a bit boring mostly staying indoors no trips planned of course in ukraine things been put on ice for the time being probably still gonna go aiming to go maybe about a maybe may maybe march if i'm cheeky just slip out and if not march maybe may because i've got something else i'm gonna go to in april so that would be the vibe and then when we come back it's probably gonna be what primavera time so that's nice be able to do that um and then that's about it really and then wait for the rest of the stuff to kind of pop off and then i think there might be a paris trip planned of course as i mentioned beforehand because i think paris is reopening clubs soon so that means a possession festival that i bought tickets for in august will be happening so i'm very happy about that and of course for my prison brothers and sisters who are also going to be able to go back into the clubs um out of their cafes and whatnot and drinking and whatnot but of course you're going to need a vaccine passport because that bill got passed recently in france similar to the one we have here in the uk but i think it's a bit stricter over there in france it's going to require if you want to basically enjoy any of the cultural delights that you have to or hospitality things in france you're going to have to have a vaccine passport i'm pretty sure um but from what i know of, uh, of french people they really enjoy their um social life so if someone says the only way you can go to a, a wine bar or not is to have a vaccine passport they'll get it done if it means it's fake or real regardless they'll get it done so i don't think that'll be much of a concern but anyway loads of things to get ch chatting about let's just like dive on deep and not waste any more of the time that we don't really have available given the current state of affairs first things first little news here courtesy of tmz regarding um kanye's recent interview that he did with uh, jason lee from hollywood unlocked pretty good interview I'm not going to lie um not really the biggest fan of jason lee obviously but um you know in terms of his interview skills i don't really think he's the best guy and obviously he's obviously going to come at it from a more uh salacious uh point of view but he did seem to kind of um di he did seem to kind of take a bit of a back seat i guess as in the presence of kanye he did like kind of respect what he represents and wasn't too you know didn't go for the nonsense kind of hot didn't go for the nonsense sort of trashy questions and essentially kanye spent most of the time talking anyway as he always does so that was pretty good to see but one really interesting detail that came out of it that really made everyone look disgusting in the whole entire scenario was this news courtesy of tmz where it says kim kardashian no new ray j sex tape on laptop kanye retrieved so if you remember there was a few months back i think when whack 100 i don't know why he was doing this i think maybe because kanye was flipping out i don't know what happened for whatever happened whack 100 for whatever reason decided to start antagonizing and poking at kanye by suggesting that he had the laptop that had an additional bit of footage of the original sex tape that ray j and kim filmed back in the day that basically launched her career and obviously now she's a completely different person she's obviously gotten into loads of different things businesses and whatever it may be she's a mother of four it's not the most you know flattering thing that she wants to be reminded of even though like i said it legitimately launched her career and essentially the career of her entire family but still it's not something that she wants to kind of remember for whatever reason whack 100 you know man to man decided that was a good way to kind of get back at kanye by leaking this stuff or by you know making it seem as if he has this um crazy secret if it's a bit of footage that no one's seen and i don't know for whatever reason that was his tactic and i didn't understand why that made sense and then i guess kanye because he's too forgiving i think in that respect he decided to have a meeting with him and then you see uh, that clip or that picture that came out recently where yeah, i guess he was recording something with game because obviously the easy track came out where he's hanging out with um whack and i was like oh my god so this guy literally forgave the guy 
in just to basically keep the peace and i'm sure to appease his wife at the time who obviously they're going to be divorcing soon i guess who knows if they are and he did all that and it just made me think like how gross is everyone involved in this situation from the ray j to possibly still having the laptop um to the idea that this is still a bit of a marketing tool for the kardashians in general the fact that kanye has to go and do these games politic to kind of get this thing back and he can't just say what he actually feels about the whole situation it just feels gross and now they're saying oh allegedly this laptop that everyone was worried about has now that magically doesn't have anything on it don't get me wrong if it did have something on it i wouldn't expect them to say it anyway why would they it's none of our business but the fact that they tried to make it seem as if it was a big deal and now all of a sudden it's not a big deal is ridiculously suspicious but hey these people end up lying in the first place. It says here, there's apparently only one Kim Kardashian rage sex tape in the universe. And while Kim's thankful Kanye recently retrieved the laptop with footage, we're told there's nothing sexual about the unseen content. Kanye made waves during his Hollywood and Locks interview on Monday when he shared that he had delivered the laptop to Kim. we hear the clip now, courtesy of uh, Hollywood Unlocked. Be mean and hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Attention. And to be playing games and then culturally it's okay. You know, how are you going to bring me to SNL and kiss the dude you dating right in front of me. And everybody's like, oh, that's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. After I went and went and got the laptop from Ray J myself that night, right? And then got on a red eye, I met this man at the airport, then got on a red eye, came back, delivered it to her at 8 a.m. in the morning. And then I gave it to her and she cried when she saw it. You know why she cried when she seen that laptop? Because it represents how much she's been used. It represents how much people didn't love her and they just saw her as a commodity. People or her, or her family? That's one messy question you got in there, but you know, you can't blame the guy. He's sitting in front of a genius. He has to kind of, someone he's probably not going to ever interview ever again, so he might as well get the question in. It says, yeah, many speculated that to contain a rumored sex tape between Ray J and Kim, but a rep for Kim tells us that that's not the case. After review, there's nothing sexual unseen, only footage on the plane on the way to Mexico and footage at a club and restaurant on the same trip. Kim remains firm in her belief that there is no new second, there's no new second tape that exists. So yeah, I just want to know though, for, for people that have had actual kids and stuff, is it normal? when you're getting divorced to be dating, especially when you got like four kids, I guess it's different because these people aren't really normal people, right? They kind of live in their own little universe. They're sort of, you know, they move to this beat, their own drum. They don't really abide by our quote unquote social norms because they're afforded that luxury. But is it normal when you've got four children to be the first thing on your mind is to be dating? Usually I'd imagine if you're divorcing somebody, it's usually, what's, what's that term they say? It's irre, irre Irre irrevocable or irrecrocable whatever that word is right um differences where you're at a point where there's no amount of mediating or therapy that can mend the relationship is broken and it's better that you separate so you're trying to get that divorce done so you can basically go on and live your lives but you're not doing it because you want to meet somebody new you're doing it because you can't stand the person you're living with or that you've had kids with yeah right? that's I, I would imagine that's that's usually the point maybe your head was turned by somebody else who showed you oh here's how you should be treated and maybe opened your eyes to how poor you've been treated at home but usually it's it's kind of okay i can't do this anymore because i'd imagine it would hurt more if it was me it would hurt more if your wife came back home and said hey i'm not in love with you no more i found somebody else like that work husband that i keep telling you about no i actually want him to be my real husband that would crush you but usually i feel like it's you not paying enough attention to your partner, maybe being abusive, physically, verbally, mentally. Those are usually things that are going to make someone say, okay, enough, I don't want to have it no more. Or if you kind of step out and decide to like cheat on them or have another kid out the out of wedlock and whatnot, of course, people are going to be flipping, you know, the partner's going to be angry. But I wouldn't imagine the first thing on your mind when you want to push through the divorce would be, okay, I want to push through it so I can go out on town and get wasted. It's mostly because you can't stand the person, but this is even a weird way. They're doing it completely the other way around they're like openly dating people whilst they're in the midst of divorce and they've got four kids but i guess again like i said they're not normal people you know who's looking after those kids as kanye said in the flipping easy track the cameras raise the kids and i mean stop like making it seem like you guys are super moms because it's not no one believes that no one believes you can look like him work out as much as he does handle all the business that she does and legitimately look after those children you, you can't it's not it's not it's not logical for sure there's a few honduras um chile 
Peruvian, Mexican, or something, or maybe even straight up Filipino mums that are sorry nannies that are in that house raising those kids um, as best as they can. But hey, what can you do in it? Um, I'm glad Kanye got it sorted. I'm glad they're, they're in some way able to kind of move on from this. But I think it's incredibly whack, all pun intended, from whack to have done what he done. You would expect somebody to kind of pull you to a side away from the cameras and not make it a thing, even if it because essentially it smells like extortion. It smells like Wack 100 basically extorted Kanye because for sure some funds, some money had to get exchanged for that laptop to get given to him because I'm sure it wasn't Ray J's laptop. I'm sure Ray J didn't have it in his possession. It probably was given to somebody else who had contacts with Wack and then Wack basically put a bat signal out, took his finder's fee and that person pocketed them. I mean, for sure it happened, for sure. And Kanye being Kanye, you know, wanting to protect his family because still, even though, you know, they're not together, that's still the mother of his kids. If she looks bad, he looks bad, but God damn it, man. Well, what an, what an awful, awful place. What an awful kind of amount of people to be around if you're a celebrity. Like just piranhas all over the place wanting to bloody extort you, take the piss. Like, I, I don't know, man. I would absolutely hate it. It would drive me absolutely insane. You wouldn't know who to trust. Like, it's just annoying. Like, but whatever, what can you do? Um, moving on to annoying things, um, especially for people when they're going through because, you know, for whatever reason nowadays, it feels like, I don't know society we just lack compassion people don't really have any way of understanding how another person is feeling how they got to that point um why they snapped it's always quick judgment about oh you're good you're bad it's too much black and white thinking um usually for people you don't know which i understand but you know we know people within our own orbit within our own circle of friends who go through crazy shit and we're a bit more forgiving to them i think you should be as forgiving to people that you don't know because you know we're going through stuff too that you don't know about one example of this is this issue currently going on with the dear Ari Lennox. Have I got it here on screen? Oh no, why is it doing this for? I don't know why it's doing this for. Okay. Now it's doing, is that it? Why is it doing that for? Okay, doesn't matter. Ah, this is annoying, isn't it? This is annoying. This is annoying. Okay, so. All right, let's just let's do this this way. Anyway, yeah. So this is a a little news article courtesy of the root regarding Ari Lennox recent um meltdown or freak out on social media. It happens quite often, but this one I think is maybe a sign that there is maybe more to it than meets the eye. So the headline says as follows: I'm done and tired. Here's why Ari Lennox wants to be dropped from her label. Um, it says the following it appears things aren't going too smoothly for American's favorite Shea Butter Baby aka Ari Lennox who recently revealed her desire to be dropped from her label following a recent podcast interview that went viral of the weekend Compass reports that during her combo with South African podcaster Mac G let's see the actual interview and why she's so angry she just says I'm just like basically the quote no let's just play clip, the clip and then we'll read the rest of the article and where we at right now is someone right now oh my married? god whoa there <laughs> Um, I'm not happy. Well, that's a wild question. <laughs> Why that way? Why acts it that way? Whoa. Because that's what you say in the song. You know what I mean? I oh, love that part. <laughs> what, did I say? what did I say that? I said in the song? Yeah. Don't you even remember that song? I do, but I don't I don't, I didn't. Oh, I guess I did say that. I did say that. Okay. <laughs> right. Let me, um. Okay, you just threw you caught me off guard there, but uh, I did say that. But no, I'm. So clearly, she wasn't too fond with somebody um, speaking to her in that way, especially in the podcast. It seems a bit of a bit of a doofy, lame move to do. Do you know what I mean? But I guess you're trying to be funny. Uh, da, 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 da. What she said. So her response was to that interview, obviously, after the fact, I'm just like, why was I alone on a call full of people? Why didn't anyone intervene? And why wasn't parts of the interview destroyed like the team promised? Why did it happen to begin with? I just feel slow and ambushed and blindsided. It continues, just because I'm how happily and freely sing right about sex doesn't make any kind of creepy disrespect warranted. I clearly was in immense shock and I hate that I didn't, didn't react differently, but fuck it. I don't want anyone feeling sorry for me. I'm tired of the narrative, exhausted. I'm good, I promise. But so far, interview. But as for as for interviews, I'm not doing them anymore. There's enough lives and interviews out there already. Next one. I've been my most uh, happiest creating music and exploring life sober. I'm not allowing anything to tamper with my peace anymore. Honestly, it's all my karma. 
So clearly she wasn't too fond of it. She didn't like the whole narrative being spun about it. Like she just complains. People obviously getting on her about it. And in general, I just think what's happening here is that it seems like to me, this is a bit of a cry for help. She clearly isn't handling fame um, well. It's not something that she kind of uh, responds to the best, especially when the, I guess it's difficult. No, I guess it's different when the reaction you're getting is somewhat negative, when people are criticizing you and pointing things out. Because I think everyone can can kind of receive praise and love and adulation, right? It's, even if it's coming at you really, really fast from all different directions, right? Um, for sure, everyone can handle that. But when people start to pick apart things, overanalyze your lyrics, overanalyze your looks, what you say, how you stand, the things you do, where you go, then it becomes a bit of a problem because not everyone's built for that. And that's no shame in that. There is no shame in that at all. I think everyone's got their talents. Everyone's got their gifts. And I think part of the reason why you'd want to be a signed artist, right? And you want to be on a record label is because it provides you with infrastructure you would imagine to obviously promote and market your music, but also provide you with infrastructure that would not put you in a situation where you could get ambushed and somebody could ask you such a cheeky question that you weren't really expecting. Because I'm a spec I'm, I assume this interview wasn't prepped prior. She had no research. There was no research by her team done in terms of finding out who this South African podcaster was, because I'm sure if they would have done it, they would have found out quite quickly that he's a little bit of a troll. Maybe he likes to shit post a bit. Maybe he likes to wind people up a bit. That's part of his brand. And maybe they would have said, Hey, because of how we know how sensitive that she is, maybe we shouldn't let her go on that show or maybe don't go on her own. Maybe we make that show with another up and coming artist or something. I don't know, whatever. Or maybe just choose somebody else to do the interview with. But I could also understand the pressure on her side, feeling like she has to, you know, uh, do her obligations as a signed artist or fulfill obligations as a signed artist in order to try and break a new market. Because I imagine, I assume the reason why she's doing a random podcast with the South African dude is because they were planning for her to do some sort of South African tour. So that was basically the idea. Let's break you in, you know, one of the places where they're English speaking, where maybe they kind of listen to your music already due to the, what they've got. You know, they've got a lot of um, analytics on the back end. They can check to find out where she's basically listened to a lot outside of North America. They probably spot it South Africa, blah, blah, blah. It makes sense. But I think in this case, her team failed her, clearly. I also think in her own sense, there needs to be more of um there needs to be more responsibility taken to make sure that she just doesn't do these random interviews. I don't think it's necessary for somebody of her level, especially considering that she does inst remember when I was on Instagram live she used to always be on live like every other day she'd be on the live doing something right and i guess it's just a medium that she feels comfortable in because you can essentially just like i'm doing now rant at people that are viewing you you don't really need to receive too much feedback and you can just ignore it if you don't want to or block people so it's pretty cool sort of platform to use if you're somebody that doesn't necessarily feel too comfortable being asked questions by people you don't, you don't know too tough so i get that but if you are our Lennox, you could easily just do interviews or sorry you could easily do like instagram lives ahead of an ep on album drop or a tour announcement that would do probably as much if not more numbers than if you sat down with like a radio station or a podcast like why would you do that and if you did go on a podcast go somewhere where you celebrate um go to a platform that maybe promotes r&b music a platform that's spoken well about you in the past and you're going to get a far better interview it's going to be a far host far less hostile environment and it's also going to be a great way for you to kind of, you know, gain new, gain new fans, maybe expand your audience, whatever it may be. I think that might be a better way to go about things. But I don't necessarily think it's something to kind of beat her over over the head with. I don't think it's her being complainy or whiny because I think she replied to somebody here who said, oh, you're always complaining. She says, yeah, complain. I'm complaining about shit. I'm going through. Meanwhile, in real life, you're just as happy as and as effed up. Um, you cry in a car too. Somebody calling you insensitive and dramatic too. You can never be honest about your, your demons. And that's not true, to be honest. I think some people deal with stress and um, conflict easier than others. It just is what it is. It doesn't mean one person's better than the other. It's just some people are a little bit more you know resolute and have ways to kind of go about and deal with those things and not be too um and, and not let it get to let not let not let it get them too down but if you are that person that does get easily triggered by that sort of stuff you need to have a team around you that can somewhat um protect you and shield you from it and act as a filter so it doesn't come through to you but it also all this sort of stuff it also makes me think and it also kind of um reminds me why certain people like you know i think of somebody like a frank ocean even the weekend why they're so hesitant to do interviews in the first place because when you're an artist 
especially a true artist at the pinnacle, right? Like Aridenix, I'd say, is the pinnacle in terms of an R&B artist, right? Part of the reason why you're so good at what you do and why you're so talented and why you can sing so amazingly and you can write so amazingly is because you're sensitive. That sensitivity, that kind of, um, oh, that kind of dramaticness, that overreaction, that overreaction that you have to everything, um, that you're doing a lot, uh, that TMI is the reason why people resonate with your music. They resonate with your art because you're able to connect with people through the words that you're able to sing or through the emotion you're able to kind of um, imbue in the music that you make, of course. But also in a negative side of things, when somebody says something to you of color, it can completely throw you off. I'm pretty sure her entire week has been ruined by that one interview. Do you know what I mean? That one thing that guy said offhandly as a joke has probably made her question many, many things. She already mentioned him being sober. So I'm sure maybe, you know, the, the, I'm not sure. I, I would assume it's probably a recent thing. Maybe the alcohol situation was affecting her prior. Like that one little comment could do that. But on the other side of things, she's able to kind of tap into her emotion and her sensitivity to make hit records that girls sing or use as captions on their Instagram pictures. It's the kind of um, pros and cons of that sensitivity as an artist. But I think also it's not something that people should take advantage of. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, and that's the, that's the sad thing about it because I feel like I, I've seen an article about Ari Linux and cr complaining or crying about a label every other week and it feels like nothing ever changes. So clearly her label or the music industry at large doesn't care about her mental health, doesn't care how she feels at all. They just kind of leave her to her own devices, which I guess is somewhat consistent because other artists too, who maybe are struggling with drugs or abusive relationships or whatnot, they also get left on their own unless they've got a good team around them. So it goes to show that the music industry by and large is an incredibly, incredibly horrible industry to work in. You know what I mean, really, really horrible industry to work in. Like everyone just wants to extract value from you because you're able to pay for their kids' private school, right? Or you're able to cover their mortgage. But when it comes to actually caring about you as a person, they don't care. They have no care in the world. They just want you to turn in albums, perform shows, tap dance, you know, whatever it may be, and then keep it moving. They won't want you to have any emotions. They don't want you to be an actual person. Um, which is why I'm surprised a lot more labels don't actually just take away the ability for their artists to post on their own social media feed. I'm surprised they don't just have it automated, where right? they just kind of get you to post stuff, they get you to go to post, they get you to take pictures in a professional studio, everything is planted, they only release, they only put stuff on your social that has to do with your music. I'm surprised more labels don't do that. They just let the artists run free on social, I guess in the hope that you say something messed up because then that will then add to the streams, which obviously adds to their ability to pay their bills and go on fancy holidays. But yeah, man, it's sad to see, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I, I didn't like her freaking out that online, talking about wanting to be dropped from a label again, talking about not wanting to do this, not wanting to do that because unfortunately too, the internet, people just don't take responsibility. If she comes out tomorrow, it look. God forbid anything drastic happens to her and she, you know, self expires. No one's going to be taking responsibility. No one's, no one will ever accept the role that they played in driving her to that point. But everyone's happy to kind of stand by the sidelines and laugh. You know I mean, it's like, nah, I'm not for that. I'm not for that. Okay, what else we have here? Let's move on. Do, 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 do. What else do we have here? Yeah, this is a mad one, isn't it? This is courtesy of... This is courtesy of the BBC. It says, Sainsbury's and John Lewis ask shoppers and staff to keep wearing their masks. Can you imagine a more horrible place to work, right? You're already having to work in a crazy... Especially in supermarkets. I don't know, I've worked in a couple. They're always cold. For whatever reason, they're always cold. Which, if you ever wondered, oh, why do people in supermarkets always wear jumpers, fleeces, gilets and whatnot? It's because it's always cold, right? It's just always permanently cold. Um, you have to deal with you know an abundance of Karens and just horrible people in general. Usually, managers are you know complete dickheads in, in every in every sense of the word, and it's just a horrible place to be. The only good thing about it is that usually it's a consistent paycheck, right? You 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 it, it very rare have I worked in a supermarket where there's been a mass firing or something, or because they're not being able to make any money, turnovers low that they have to let people go. No, it doesn't happen that way. My supermarkets are going to stay open. You basically got a job for life if you want it, but obviously the pay is measly the hours are brutal and it's always cold but imagine on top of that having to work in these stores and then being requested by your managers who you already hate to then go make sure that the customers are coming into your store are wearing masks make sure you put your mask on make sure, like why why especially in a sainsbury's 
most Sainsbury's I've seen, especially in, in London, they're mostly the kind of mini local ones, right? Like the Tesco Expresses. There's not a lot of big, you know, kind of let's go for the weekly shops, Sainsbury's around. The John Lewis's, I'd imagine, are mostly full of people who flip in vote conservative anyway. And you'd imagine most of those guys are anti-vax, right? Or don't believe in masks. Or try to imagine trying to get those guys who listen to GB News every day that they should put a mask on and you're only flipping making seven ninety nine per hour or whatever it may be. It's just a horrible situation. And I hate it because in general, it's the people that are actually on the ground floor who are going to have to bear the brunt of everyone's abuse. The off the, 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 the office bods and the boardroom people who make these decisions, they're going to be completely... Um, immune from any backlash from the customers because they're nowhere to be seen next to the customers they do come in from time to time i remember working in these supermarkets whenever the big wigs did come in you know and they weren't really big wigs they were usually just you know what you what do you call it um district managers or something they weren't really anyone super important but people would shiver they'd come in they'd have the, they wouldn't wear the like the kind of the the suits or the staff uniforms that the managers were installed or have their own bespoke suit on they have a little binder where they take notes in maybe they'll come with you knew how you knew the level of importance when it came to boarding people in supermarkets you could tell by the lack of things that they carried when they came into a store so just come in nothing on him no phone or nothing just him yeah, what's going on? Walking around, doing the thing, touching stuff. You know what I mean? Like that's when you know. Okay, cool. This person's important. Uh, so um, yeah, let's read the article quickly. It says Sainsbury's and John Lewis, Waitrose, and Morrison's will continue to ask people in England to wear masks in their shops when Plan B rules or end on Thursday. The Morrison's near me has got too many old people, too many immigrants, and too many people who just don't give a crap for you to police that. It's just not going to work. It'll just probably start fights and commotion, and who wants that? So they'll just turn a blind eye. And I'm sure most of those people, they're not getting paid enough to kind of be policing people at the door for the flipping mask. Um, it's bad enough having to chase somebody down the street for sticking a flipping pork chop down their trousers. Imagine them trying to pull people over because they haven't got a little cloth mask on. It's just crazy. Um, railroad operators also said passengers will be expected to wear masks after the legal requirement of face coverage in public areas is to be dropped. That I've got no problem with. If that became a permanent thing, you know, you know what I want? Culturally, it would be great if we lived in a country where when people got colds, because if whatever reason, I think, I wonder why that is. Because it was a big deal, especially when I used to work retail. People would always come in sick because I guess there was no sick pay, right? If you work retail, you're working, you know, you're working shift work or usually by the hour, there is no such thing as sick pay. If you don't come in, you just don't get paid that day. And because the pay is already shit as it is, you can't afford not to go in. So people would come in with colds, usually get told to come home, go home if you've got a decent manager. If not, they'll tell you to go in the stock room all day. And then still, you're, you know, you're spreading the flipping virus all over the place. And then, you know, lo and behold, two days later, five more of your colleagues have got the cold because you passed it on to them but it'd be great if going forward if you had to work retail and you had to be in the store it was okay for you to wear a mask because it felt like if to me when co before omicron kind of happened it felt like a lot of corporations were slowly trying to get people to go back to normal go back to the office you know don't wear the mask anymore no social distancing they're trying to make sure people were just like going back to some level of normality so they can maybe see a, a little bit of an increase in their turnover on the bottom line because maybe they still think they've been affected by covid but then all of a sudden it feels like things have changed again and people are a bit more forgiving for people for wearing masks if you're just full out scared and you're still worried about omicron or you just don't want to get the virus in general because you know why why would you want to get it for free so it'd be good if in the future we could live in a country where people take their own responsibility and when they're ill instead of coming into work they call in sick or if they have to go into work they wear a mask and they try and keep away from people because i remember that being a thing from back in the day when we didn't know why asian people wore face masks i remember for me personally the first time i encountered with a friend of mine who wore one and i was like hey what's up i'm going to hug him and said no, no no i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick i'm, I'm wearing this so i don't so i don't give you anything and that's when I really, cause I, again, I, you know, something you always see when you're in the airport, or when you're walking around, you might see, you know, somebody from, an, you'd see an Asian country wearing a face mask. You never thought, you never really bothered to ask, but it was always interesting. Like, why the hell are they wearing face masks? Then I think that one instance where my friend was like, no, don't, don't touch me, I'm sick. I realized, oh, they're actually doing that as a kind of form of courtesy. It's actually like a respect thing. Like, you know, it's like when someone sneezes and they cover their mouth. It's like, it's not going to stop the sneeze going anywhere it's just a sign of respect like it's like when you yawn and you cover your mouth same sort of thing but i wonder i hope that becomes like a thing that we do as british people english people we just kind of be like okay cool if i'm sick i don't need to be the hero and come in when i'm my nose is legitimately droop you know, you know 
drips of flipping bogey are raining down i can probably stay at home and if i have to come in let me at least wear an n95 mask i mean let me help everyone else out it says the following all said that they would encourage not force customers to comply again what's the point if you're gonna if you're not going to force people to wear it why try and encourage what's that mean excuse me mate would you mind putting on your mask no okay excuse me mate would you mind no okay like that, that's how it's gonna go and then after that the person saying excuse me mate will just get bored and carry on anyway it says here, yeah, but the government is still advising people to wear masks in clothes or crowded spaces. Trade union, trade union, um, you still has represents three hundred sixty thousand retail workers has urged customers to continue to observe COVID safety um, measures despite the mandatory requirement. It says here, yeah, Sainsbury's brief said safety was its highest priority, and that it would ask customers and staff in England to continue to wear face mask coverings in our stores. It will use poster campaigns and tannoy announcements to get the measures across. Attention, all customers! Attention, all customers in aisle seven! Please put on your face mask if you don't mind. I know I'm only asking to for you as a favor, but please, I'm not asking you to comply, but asking for like, come on, man! What kind of nonsense is this? What nonsense is this? like just give up already enough is enough like we're back to some semblance of normality people have all the information they need if you're sick stay home if you've got symptoms take a test wash your hands put on a mask like i don't know what else can i tell you if you're fat run i don't know whatever like eat a salad you know put down the twinkies it's not difficult like all this nonsense and again the people have to suffer after the ones on the front line like the actual people working in these stores who are loading in your flipping zucchinis and having to tell you to put a mask on and say, nah, man, I'd be so furious if that was me. Really, really furious. But, you know, when you earn a certain way, people don't care what you what, what you think and what you want to do. And they just kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I hate this. I hate this shit. I hate this shit. Um, let's continue. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about. Oh, man, this is a sad situation, isn't it? This might be a really, really tricky situation for everybody involved, but it's also, I think, a teachable moment for all. I think it's a very much a teachable moment. So it seems like this video featuring these three women who are involved in the L.A. stand up comedy scene. The two ladies on the left, Annie Liederman, I think her name is. And um, what's the girl's name? Esther something. And obviously, Kalila on the right is the girlfriend of Bobby Lee from the tiger belly podcast so all three of these ladies have you know they've been around the scene they've known what's going on i guess they sat down and for whatever reason a topic came up about you know how douchey men could be and it seems like annie liederman is alluding to the fact that allegedly brendan shaw may have been the person that she was talking about in the story who made a move on her when she knew that he had a wife and he had a family and whatnot and then kalila pipes up and says yeah he made a move on me also awful awful stuff right because you know it's embarrassing no it's equivalent of like your dms getting like especially if you forget you're doing just imagine you're a decent dude and you try to like jump in girls dms and then they all get exposed even though you did said nothing wrong it's still embarrassing you don't want everyone to see you horny on the timeline you know what I mean you don't want to see people you don't want to see you don't want anyone to see your horny bubbles like what you try and get off what emojis you use what language what verbiage or, um, when you when are you sending in messages you don't want us, anyone to see that you want it just to be t be between you and the other person but sometimes in life when you're an absolute piece of you know a piece of shit to people they can sometimes get joy out the fact of embarrassing it. So I think a lot of this is coming from a real kind of hatred, it feels like, which is really bad because it's one thing being curved or being left on red with somebody who just wasn't interested. It happens. It's brutal. It can hurt your ego. But somebody feeling somewhat gleeful and happy that they're going to be, you know, giving you a sleepless night, that's really a sign that you are a piece of shit. So I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to give my other comments on the other side regarding this situation and why I think in general this could be a teachable moment for all dudes, especially due to work in some sort of creative industry where a lot of there's a lot of mixing of the opposite sexes and stuff and lines can be blurred. I think it's really important to keep some things in mind. So let's play the clip and hear what Annie has to say regarding this alleged encounter with Baba or somebody else. Who knows? It insults like, me too because I when guys do that it makes me so like you just think I'm that big yeah I had a guy that was like why don't you walk me to my truck this married guy where I'm like <laughs> and we know him I'm not gonna say who it is but um he's like, I know him why don't you give me a walk why don't you give like you should walk me to my truck I'm like 
so what I can blow you? <laughs> like what? Wait, like, who was it? Oh, but it's just like ew. it's like why would I? Wait, like, I love that we have the same people that yes, that the same ones come. Want us to walk for you? The, oh, he came for me so hard, and we know his pause. He came for me. Pause. Kalele. Pause. He came for me. Pause. This chick. And like the thing that I think is like at least a little Esther, bit better. <laughs> the bad again, not to stop all the time, but isn't it also obvious that women? There's no, there's no, there's no one that hates each other more than other women, and there's some sort of like, I don't want to say gl there's, there's some sort of um, they get some weird. It sounds like they got some weird satisfaction of the fact that they obviously have this shared experience, which in some ways is somewhat validating because it means you know they're they're desirable, but there's also this idea that oh he's got a missus at home but he still wants me. Do you know what I mean? So it's like they've got this kinship between each other, like, oh, we're two hot bad bitches. But then they're also thinking who's hotter. And then there's the other side of it where it's like, oh, he's got a, she's got he's got a or oh, he's got a um a lady at home and he was still trying to get in my DMs. Like let everyone let the world know. Because some thinking about it also, it's like like I said, it's either this girl really hates him or this is just a way to kind of pat themselves on the back a little bit. It's a little bit of a humble brag, but you know, let's let it continue. <laughs> Esther, he's coming for you. Don't worry. Yet. That is, it's just oh, crazy. Now that you washed your hair, maybe. Esther, it's on maybe New now Year, that you washed your hair. On New Year's Eve, while he was having dinner with his family, he was like, what are you doing tonight? This year? What are maybe you three doing years here? ago. He was like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, left him on red. He but was he like, knows well, I hate that I'm with my yes. in-laws right now. Do you want to go? He At did least that, to that me. is like, he thinks you're going to be a partner in crime. Like for me, I was like single. I'm like, why would I like, it's not like we're deviants together. It's like, you think, because I was thinking about like, if we go to your truck, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say I was like in, which I was never in at all. <laughs> let's say I was in. It's like, I love this. so wait, we walk to my car. I finished my spot being very good at comedy. You not being good at comedy. And then, <laughs> That's a so, clue. By the way, I don't want like to be seen with you. That's I don't. the biggest clue you could ever give. And like, so you're not good at comedy. And then you want me to walk you to your car like, so I, let's say, okay, so I'm literally like, I, I leave a sea of adoring fans, okay? Like I leave a sea of like people being like, can I take pictures with you? You're amazing. Where'd you get your outfit? It's Esther Club. You can get it on, or it's Sleepover by Esther. You can get it on her website and Esther on Ice. I'm like in the middle of just like joy. You want me to stop like what I've worked my ass off to do? You want me to stop doing that so I can walk you <laughs> To a car that's more expensive than the one I'm living in at that time. <laughs> to then, yes. to what? Suck your dick? Like, I'm not coming in this situation. Like, what is this? <laughs> Where's my orgasm in this scenario? There's no, like, it wasn't what, are you going to bang me doggy style while the, <laughs> the door guys look fucking Christopher Columbus me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is the incentive? But uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what would I get out of this? Mm -hmm. That I get to suck your unfunny dick? Like, I'm good. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Now, this is, I think, a teachable moment, in my opinion, because I feel like most dudes have done something similar where you've kind of worked in a workplace where maybe there was a, an abundance of the opposite sex. And sometimes working in those kind of workplaces, especially if you work there long enough, you can get, it's not beer goggles, but you get those weird work goggles where you start seeing things that aren't actually there and you start developing feeds of people that probably aren't necessarily rooted in any kind of truth just because you just spend so much time around them. Especially back in the day when we used to all work in flipping offices, right? Or in actual, we actually have to leave our homes to go to play, especially if you have an office job. Most people, office jobs have to kind of work remotely or you do the split thing. But when you spend your entire day at your workplace, usually in my experience working in offices you also spend your evenings with the same people that you worked with because you went to unwind and kind of forget about the day which was which usually turned into an opportunity to just gossip about what happens at work which is always annoying the last thing i want to do is be at work and then leave have a drink with a work friend and then spend all the time gossiping about people that work there but you know it happens all the time it's hard to fight it because people just love to gossip about people that they work with but it is what it is but sometimes along the line you can build you can kind of feel, you can start to have feelings for people just because you're around them all the time. And you start to feel, oh my God, you know, especially if you've got somebody that you're with, maybe I'm with the wrong person, I should be with her. But it's like, no, it's just, you shared some, you, you've got like a shared connection because you work in this place and there's a kinship there. But I also think a step above that is when it comes to the creative fields, 
when it comes to stuff like you know working in nightlife you know dj uh, artist comedian band whatever it may be i think there should be i wouldn't say a rule but you you should probably stick to some sort of rule that you don't shit where you eat in general because i think personally the pursuing people that you work with in terms of you know even romantically and then actually you want to date them and not just you want to bang it's not worth it it really isn't because that blurring of lines can never be unblurred and also for me i feel like because i've done it myself and i know how terrible i felt about it it just feels conniving it feels as if you were playing a game and pretending to be the friend and then once you got the friend pass and they were comfortable around you you snuck in and said surprise you know what i mean i want to suck it pussy yeah that's what it felt. and that's not good no one wants that i think even if it's even if that surprise is creepy now it's probably better to get it out in the open first when you meet them like hey nice to meet you i want to suck it pussy and if they say no it'll hit you in the face at least you, you don't know where you stand but pretending to be that person's friend, trying to help them out with their career, giving them advice and all this stuff, shoulder to lean on, and then slipping your hand down below, that's really gross and out of hand, completely out of hand and unacceptable. And if anything, it doesn't help, it doesn't help kind of breed a kind of safe working environment for people because everyone's going to feel like, especially females, they always feel like they have to kind of have eyes in the back of their head. And it also, for me, I'm just thinking also, kind of weirdly enough because i heard a, a few people like you know burt kreischer and stuff complain about people like nikki glazer no nikki glazer um chelsea handler and other comedians like who's the other one the other blonde lady who had a netflix special who's got like a really you know she's cute but she's got a really like she's a bit stern face i forgot her name but anyway there's a couple of comedians who a lot of those guys say are a bit standoffish and maybe a bit bitchy and whatnot but i now i've kind of figured out why because essentially, when they were coming up, I think, they had to navigate all this nonsense that Annie's speaking about. You know, these, you know, um, uh, these, uh, these approaches that you didn't invite, you know, creepy comments, bloody blah, 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 propositions. So it's no surprise when these ladies actually make it that and making it basically means you don't have to hang around at the comedy store anymore you don't have to maybe hang around in the parking lot you could just do your set and leave or you get a prime set and you just literally jump into a car and go somewhere else and it's no surprise they do that and they completely separate themselves from those comedians and kind of hang out with the more you know hollywood type people who maybe produce shows or you know own networks or whatnot that's what they usually do or maybe just straight up celebrities and actors and stuff it makes more sense because they maybe feel more safe around them because they may be a bit lower in the rungs on the terms of importance and they can just maybe blend in and just hang out but it does explain why those people run away it does explain a lot it really does explain because if this is what they have to deal with and they're not that prominent and again you know even though they're all cute don't get me wrong it's not as if they're all flipping 10 out of 10s either so imagine if you're slightly more attractive and you also maybe give the hint that you might be down for things imagine how much a, imagine how much stuff you have to wade through and stuff you have to put up with so i think in general i've kind of made efforts in my own life to be a little bit more no to a little bit more to be upfront with my intention so if i am interested in somebody i want to let them know usually i've always been like that anyway but sometimes you can you know slip up but i've also wanted to make it plain and true that i'm also somebody you can be safe around like if if this relationship and connection started off as a friend thing it's gonna stay as a friend thing if it changes in the, in the end cool but i'm not going to you know initiate anything because i feel i feel like that just sends off the wrong signals especially if you're in a relationship you don't want to do that of course but if you even if you're single i just think you're far better off just letting things happen especially when you're working in the same it's not it's not um it's completely different to somebody you just meet in the street of course you know you don't gonna see them again you want to maybe try and pick them up or, or get their number call cool, whatever people do that all the time but i mean when you're working with somebody day to day i think you owe them that level of respect to actually treat them like a peer by not seeing them as a sexual object it's difficult when you're a dude and got a penis cool but try it because in general what ends up happening because if you don't try it this is what happens they're laughing and they're joking about it but i'm sure at the time and they didn't feel too great about it right being told that basically you're you're no you, you're you're only as you're only good for a quick suck in the flipping car in a car park of this comedy store he didn't even have the he didn't even that's the thing about this story that's mad if it's true he didn't even offer to like take her out on a date or something like oh hey i've been checking you out i think you're cute um we obviously got a good connection you know things were different maybe i don't know whatever 
it was all just straight let me take you to my truck and you can give me a sloppy toppy it's like god damn it how to make a girl feel flipping validated and loved and respected and adored you know what i mean but again i don't know if it's true or not you know what i mean it's not my business and stuff i think this is way above my pay grade and stuff but it's also an indication if ever you needed it that this guy's reputation is just in tatters because for someone to come out and say this publicly means that they legitimately don't like you like for real don't like you because you know you she knows what this is going to do damage wise right this is a grenade this is like you know throwing a grenade in someone's house and casually walking away like this is going to cause a lot of drama and uh, um, you know he probably has no one else to blame but himself about the situation but i think it is a um a teachable moment for everybody especially dudes to be like hey when you're in a work environment and you're with females especially and you you feel like you have feelings maybe have a wank maybe go outside and take a breath of fresh air have a glass of water chill out relax if it happens it happens but for the most part leave them alone try and be honestly try and be friends with girls in your scene that you're in and you'll probably have a better time trying to hook trying to get other girls to like you because usually if you're the dude that's able to because it's very rare there's not a lot of dudes that can just hang out with girls as friends because they always have this flipping monkey brain in them thinking i want to fuck i want to fuck i want to fuck so if you can turn that off and just hang out with people it actually makes you more desirable to other people it just does or it just makes you look like a fun person because you're not going out for the sole tension just to go and hook up i had that switch a few years ago where I, especially for me going out it went from when i was first going out to clubs and stuff it went from just me going out to kind of lose myself and forget about my home life and then it turned into me actually enjoying or maybe meeting new people especially friends or people i went to add on Facebook. especially back in the day my facebook friends list was like crazy it was like in the five thousands Oh no, sorry, high 4,000 because I don't think you can get above 5,000 because I think they kept it at like 499. But that's what I was mostly going out for. And then if along the way something happened where I'm in the, maybe hooked up with somebody, bonus. But I wasn't going out there with the sole intention to hook up because I feel like it just it just emits off of you. It's like a stench. You just give off a of desperation. And no one wants that around them. No one wants a desperate person. No one wants a person that's just clout hungry. And no one wants a person that's just literally going out trying to get anything that moves you. I mean, that's just not going to work for you. But God damn it what a crushing crushing revelation to put out there again i'm hoping it's not true for that guy because if it is oof, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, an interesting week for a minute interesting week but yeah we move in it next on the list we have this news courtesy of hyper beast regarding blondie mccoy's new adidas's called the ab gazelles they look fairly decent don't get me wrong all black shoes with a somewhat gummy sole are always going to be something that i will for sure get behind um they've got that sleek thin silhouette for guys that have sleek thin shoe, sleek thin feet i do not my foot looks like a flipping you know uh elephant foot so that's probably not the best for me uh, is, the, uh, is it just one of those shoe shapes where I would need to size up because my toes will be scratching and rubbing against the sides but if i size up it won't fit it's that kind of vibe it's like a samba sort of vibe right without the without the extreme padding maybe because it looks a little bit um i don't know lightweight in that regard but it's a fairly decent looking shoe it's actually a gazelle sorry not a samba but it's actually a decent looking shoe but it's just funny because i was wondering if i was if this would be like i was wondering if he was going to call these like the all right mates i mean all right mate that is it with that kind of weird faux um i don't know uh shepherd's bush cockney accent it's bizarre in it the way he speaks man really really interesting i don't know if it's an i don't know if it's an an accent he's kind of developed over time or if it's like legitimately how he speaks but it kind of just goes to show like it kind of just like is another another kind of example of that weird cosplaying thing that people were doing back in the day especially in the skateboarding community especially when you think of brands like palace and stuff where they were pretending to look like they were working class like they, they dressed like they were kids you would might see in canning town or custom house and shit places where i'm legitimately from and i have friends that are actually from there i went to school there and stuff and none of these guys look like that i mean they'd be wearing loafers with tracksuit bottoms and sovereign rings and you know drinking red like drinking the stella artois and what's like like what what cockney lad have you met that drinks stella artois with um 400 pound gucci loafers and 
a track a that's tracksuit pants that's not a real person you're just inventing what you think a working class person actually looks like and you know for the most part these people are living in like lab grove and like you know de beauvoir and stuff it's like that's not cockney there's nothing cockney about it. it's in london don't get me wrong but just because you can say all oh, right mate and, and stuff it doesn't mean anything but yeah the uh blondie mccoy's all right mates you put these on and you instantly turn into del boy or some shit oh but yeah they look cool they look nice i'm not going to lie they look very nice i i do like the fact that he does tend to go for this sort of silhouette more he likes his sleek shoe it kind of reminds me of um what's his name um olsen guy he likes a lot of um astro turfs and whatnot those kind of sneakers when he makes his skate shoes or when he's wearing them anyway especially when he used to be sponsored by nike he'd always be wearing kind of um archive or you know astro turf shoes that he or what are they called what are they call them in the u.s astro turf shoes or they call them something else whatever you know shoes i'm talking about like five side soccer shoes he'd usually wear them as kind of um skateboarding shoes because he preferred the sleekness of it and obviously he had a lot of grip because most of them are going to be indoor soccer shoes because they're going to be good to kind of um skate with and whatnot so yeah look pretty decent let's read the text regarding it it says following the debut of the inspired gazelle hybrid edition utilizing bits of the superstar and the wensley silhouette blondie mccoy and adidas are linking up once again to bring out a new trio of ab gazelles the english designer and skater looks to launch a new capsule apparel collection featuring uh following the release of the thames the silver jury for sure there's a flipping sovereign included there in it for sure for sure there has to be something to do with that or the big ben or something or some portrait of the queen it's like all right mate um blondie took the instagram to tease the latest ab gazelle in black in gray black and blue colorways also joining the capture collection taking a look at the slate black colorway the shoe is another hybrid variation fusing the gazelle indoors okay so there's another colorway too let's see the other colorway is a blue one I haven't seen those the upper stroke is a ripstop base oh it's ripstop okay that's the that's the material okay now so that's waterproof um to some extent or you know water resistant um it says here yeah, they're essentially indoor football shoes with high shine accents reminiscent of dress shoes that might be worn with a tuxedo or some bullshit charity ball who goes to bullshit charity balls anyway who even gets invited to bullshit charity balls some of these things that they talk about man <laughs> when you're just about to turn up at flipping miami out basil it's like no one what cockney person goes to a bullshit charity ball the closest thing that they do is maybe raising money for like the local nursing home by playing bingo somewhere but hey what do i know let's see the other colorways uh is there the other ones here or they're not they're just bluffing let's see if they're there no they're not we don't see the other colorways okay whatever um yeah it looks decent looks nice enough i'm sure when it comes out people are going to be hyped for them um they're definitely going to uh make it a thing he's still doing the socks thing yeah cool but yeah um check those out when they do, do end up coming out not sure when doesn't say on the actual release of the article because it's hype piece and they just put that information with no actual real details from anybody but hey ho what can you do next on the list we have this courtesy of hype beast once more talking about the jound and babe collaboration i've talked about before my podcast and it looks great the shoes look absolutely banging i don't think anyone can deny that um they did a really good job by just making them simple they didn't obviously you know stand the jound stuff where they just took the classic uh white and gray colorway which is if if i'm not mistaken it's the same colorway for the first ever air force one i'm pretty sure so it's a nike air force one high that's like a gray nike air force one high gray it's like the first one so i'm sure that's the color where everyone kind of copies it's like a high it's like white and gray and i had a pair of them that i had to sell you yeah, that's the one there we go it's there uh you see that's the one there no not that one this one that one there so that was the one the og right no that's the nice different one it's this one yeah no no, no no where is it where is it where is it, where is it? where is it it's like the classic colorway oh, i don't know it's just yes yeah, basically this it's like that wolf gray that's the one uh wolf gray wolf gray this should be the one in the high that's a classic colorway that everyone copies when they're doing their sort of classic white colorway and obviously uh, um matthew williams at air leaks did the same sort of thing too on that colorway shoe that came out remember with what kind of that was a high as well design so it's a fairly common um color combination especially when you're going for an all-white shoe you want to maybe add a bit of pop without making them look a bit too crazy but i think the ones i had with these with a little nylon strap as well 
I forgot. I sold them a while ago. I remember I had them. I bought them. They were basically um, the shape was a bit off, but I remember they re-released them again. So it might be actually these. Yeah, it might be these actually that they were the ones similar. So, but it's got obviously a silver swoosh, and the uh, bape and jound ones just have a grey. But yeah, the, the colorways are flipping banging. I love the little detail here at the top with the little metal eyelet, the tubular laces. It just looks like it's made out of lux leather. It looks all tumbled and stuff like great. And then to add it, to add on top of it, they've also decided to release a classic um, grey hoodie. You know, John is obviously obsessed with um, perfecting the grey pullover hoodie. So it's no surprise that they decided to jump onto board that and kind of pull from the archive and get some actual grey. I'm sure it's going to be made out of great cotton. It's going to be a great shape. You know, I love the fact that they've got a tasteful ape there. Is that an actual ape? I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's tasteful, but I like that. I just love everything about it. Hopefully, maybe the pants are going to be part of the collection too. Or maybe it's just going to be the hoodie and the shoes. But regardless, man, this is definitely going to be something that I'm going to be trying to get my hands on. Whether or not I do be successful is another thing all entirely. Uh, da -da -da. So what I say here, an article in similar fashion to the cakes, the sweater is done up in a neutral uh, tones of grey and white font instead of the traditional ape head logo. Branding Jand has remixed the verbiage with a tasteful ape spelling out, um, likely to reference a design uh, entity affinity to minimal design. Inside the hoodie, the size tag has come brandished with a signature logo So for each party. Yes, I like that little joint logo too. I remember back in the day when there was a collaboration with streetwear, you'd get the logo of one brand on the on the front and another brand on the back. So that was quite a good way to kind of do things that way. Or maybe on the little tag on the sleeve or on the bottom of the hem or whatnot. But yeah, this is a great collaboration. I can't wait for it to come out. It's annoying that they're drip feeding it like this. It's a little bit of a honey dick, which makes me think that it's going to be very limited if they're doing this. Or maybe it's going to be the other way around. It might be just like that. What was that fucking god awful Puma and Bape? No, Puma. Yeah, Puma and Bape jacket. The one that what's his name was wearing i forgot the flipping uk rapper i forgot his name um terrible terrible collection and it felt like that didn't go away for like two years it just hung around on the flipping sales rack so maybe they're trying to cover their bases and make sure they don't have that similar situation by really really promoting it because this has been it feels like it's been a while since when did that first pick of these shoes come out on his instagram let's see when did he upload this it feels like a long time ago yeah december 20th bruv and they're still pushing it now so you would have thought it would have dropped before that but they are clearly still trying to draw up some interest and make sure that they when they do drop they sell out sell out but there's no denying these are going to retail you know the babes is going to retail easily for like 200 dollars plus the hoodie i can imagine it going for maybe more so it's not as if like um they're not going to get any money through the tills on them but i guess it's just making sure that they sell out in record time so they can do all the necessary marketing things but yeah i like it man jammed with bathing nape hoodie and shoes due to come out soon probably some more stuff in the collection keep an eye out if you are interested then to move on from that we've got the um i think a a, a brand or a company that's very underrated in terms of their nike collaborations especially given their sort of taste because you know usually i'm not really a fan of what they do kind of clothing wise and whatnot but you can't deny in terms of being a culturally relevant brand especially for what they do for the asian community specifically clot is really on a level on a kind of you know they're, they're basically they can't be touched i think in some respects especially when you think of you know edison chen and what he's been through in his career the fact that he's basically you know reinventing himself entirely from his acting career to doing what he does at clot probably so much so that some people don't even know he used to act or still does act sometimes it's really crazy to see what they've done and it, it, i think even if i don't like the shoe that they put out in terms of collaboration i can always preach appreciate how they went about it the fact that they took time and kind of you know laid it with references and tried new materials applications different colorways i love it the only thing i'd say they're not the most adventurous when it comes to models they tend to kind of always go for the tried and true maybe the only thing that was really adventurous would be the what was that see-through air max that i had the first one right i think that might be one of the first clock vibrations that was obviously something quite adventurous because it didn't look like anything else that ever dropped um what was it remember that one what was it called man my knowledge of names and stuff has gone out of the way the mx1 the ones i had i sold them i think for maybe for a thousand or something back in the day how much are worth now i think i sold them for mine for a thousand the original ones is that how many how much they're worth no way god okay i'm pretty sure i sold mine close to like a thousand whatever these are called what are they called the kiss of death clot air max ones um so 
I feel like this was the last time they did something super adventurous, but still, it's a silhouette everyone knows and recognizes. Yes, it's a non-linear Air Max One. It's got the translucent or the sort of transparent toe box and whatnot. You know, the one that used to always fuck up on people when they're sweating down when they're wearing them and whatnot. Um, they sold funky socks for them. It had an interesting insole. The outsole was cool too, but essentially it's still just an Air Max One. So the only thing I could say about them, just to be slightly critical, is the fact that they do go for safe models. But still, you would no denying that they do look great. Like these new shoes coming up from Clot with Nike um, on a Dunk High model. So it feels like Nike are still not letting go of the Dunk High. It feels like we got abused and beaten over the head with dunks the last couple of years. And it feels like the same thing is going to happen with the Cortez. So if you're not a fan of the heavy handed marketing approach, the heavy handed rollouts from Nike, then I would, you know, probably turn off your flipping phone and shut down your Google Chrome and, you know, put good hype beats on your band list or, you know, kicks on fire or whatnot, because they are going to be flooding the streets with those Cortez, especially now I've seen the new Sakai's. It makes those union ones make sense now because I was like, oh, why are union collaborating on the flipping a on a Cortez? You know, I like it. And I think much like the Jordan 2, union done of good and even Virgil RIP, he did a really good job getting people to care about Jordan 2s because you know even when Vashti did her shoe back in the day no one cared about Jordan 2s so they've basically did it themselves through having great colorways and great looking shoes but god damn it man this dunk like enough but still like I said just objectively even though I wouldn't wear them I love these I think they look really really cool um I'm not even sure what that material is I've ever seen a text but they're basically dunk highs all silver at the top with obviously white stitching and then a completely white midsole and outsole which i'm a big fan of i don't think enough collaborations do this anymore because everyone wants to have that kind of um off-white sole that kind of looks vintage and in a different color um, outsole but i definitely like the all one color look on the sole i think it gives it a little bit of a thicker feel a little bit more structured in terms of shape it's just a sneak ahead thing but i, I don't mind that when they do that um but yeah these look crazy and i'd actually wear them i should take this back i think they look really good i'd actually wear the hell out of these man they look great so I said, for anyway, maintaining its relationship with Nike, Jordan Brand, Edison Chen's Clot is now ready and get another sure to be um, sought after footwear collaboration. Following early imagery, we now have an underfoot look at the up and coming Clot and Nike Dunk High. Release expected to arrive this year features a holographic metallic silver uppers as scented with translucent TPU overlays. Additional detailing comes in the form of matching satins. Oh, it's satin. Nice. Um, that's stock liners and exposed stitching design and perforated toe box. Rounding up the design of the shoe are co branded tongue tags, represent sorry, printed insoles, and white sole units. Yeah, these look flipping banging. D the pictures are horrible. I'm glad they didn't make why does every sneakerhead do this? Stand on the toes or walking like toe thing. I hate it. Like, enough. And again, exposing the shitty tattoo, the crappy socks, like, just take better pictures man i hate it it's either that or flipping pin rolls and they didn't even lace them up properly that's another pet peeve of mine too if you're gonna take pictures of shoes lace them correctly like what is this lacing it just looks terrible um continue yeah but yeah so i guess this is one of those this is one of those um chinese sites right or places that get stuff and then before everyone else gets it so that they can send them to the rep machines and they can rev them up and then go because for sure these are going to be all over the rep markets but yeah i love them man no i'm, I'm a fan of them i'm not gonna lie like i said i think clot are really underrated in terms of their nike collabs let's see what other ones that they did to us i forgot i think they did they did a few air force ones like i said they need to be a bit more adventurous with their models but um the air force one i i kind of like again i wouldn't wear them but i thought the air force one was good i thought yeah that might be all of them actually yeah see a lot of air max ones those what are they jordan 20 sun thinks maybe they are the only one it's a bit of a curveball but i'd imagine also because they're very they seem to be very uh, proud of their chinese roots it wouldn't surprise me if this jordan is very popular within the chinese streetwear community it wouldn't surprise me that particular i don't know which one it was a 22 or something like that that wouldn't surprise me if someone said that but yeah um oh yeah and they've got the yeah they did the sakai as well didn't they? sorry they did um they did one of these LD waffles too, right? I'm sure they did. Or maybe, was this colorway? This is the colorway I thought that was LD. That was a clock one. Yeah, it was this kind of reddy, kind of orangey colorway. And of course, you know, DJ Khaled, the guy with the worst flipping. He's got the flipping worst sneaker collection in the world, isn't it? Just wherever Nike sends him and wherever he can buy from, you know, Foot Looker, it's somehow in his collection. He's got a dead collection. That's what, But I guess it's kind of what happens when you have too much money. 
too much money just breeds an inability to have good taste i think and the people that do have good taste to have money that's why people kind of suck them off so much because it's so rare uh but yeah the collabs that they've done so far you know they've just really decent you know they're kind of wearable shoes it's not too crazy oh yeah the footscape wow i remember those from back in the day the clock footscape that's a great collab that was a really good that, that was back in the day when pin rolls were acceptable especially with foot footscapes and hirachis and whatnot but yeah edison chen is a beast of a businessman let's not doubt that let's not doubt that he is an absolute beast and yeah they're gonna come out soon i guess keep your eyes peeled if you are that way inclined and if you're not i don't know why you're here what else are we going to talk about here let's move on what how much time have i wasted already have i just wasted too much time speaking to you oh it's already an hour bloody hell i didn't know it's that far ahead um what else do I to talk about here before we move on do, 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 do. i think that might be it then maybe i'll stop there i don't want to keep you too long in terms of what i'm recording and whatnot um what else i was going to talk about here where is it do, 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 do. bear with me one sec mm. oh yeah let's talk about this actually let's end it here so um obviously i've mentioned before that um it was actually virgil's last show at louis vuitton that i obviously um shared via the podcast in terms of the clip i put out um if you watch the youtube you've definitely have seen that so obviously it was a bit of a bittersweet moment but oddly enough, because he was such a prolific um, guy in terms of design and because he was such a workhorse, I'm sure there are going to be many, many products and, pro and projects and collaborations that he has done that maybe were completely before he passed away that are probably going to come out within the next few years, which are going to act as a weird kind of um, me memorial. Is that, is that the right word to say? They're going to act as a way for everyone to kind of remember him in their own little way you know via the shoes that they have bought legitimately or illegitimately because he was a fan of reps too so people are going to feel somewhat empowered to wear stuff that he made that made me coming from unlegit sources um and just is going to feel like okay this is a way to kind of hold this person's memory close and dear to my heart and maybe it's a good way for you to have that stuff in your collection so that when you glance at it away when you glance at it when you're getting ready in the morning and you're kind of procrastinating or you're not you know following through and the things that you need to do in order to get to where you need to get to you're going to remember oh this guy whilst he was being diagnosed with you know a, a pretty serious illness was still able to work was still able to put his front foot forward and he still was able to kind of present um and provide on the highest level possible and i think that's what we're basically seeing now with some of these items so i think again for his family and friends it must be best sweet because every piece of content that surrounds him involves Virgil always and you know his touch and his fingerprint can be seen on all things and he's always front and center he was the kind of the king of self-promotion so it's one way so it's going to it's going to feel a bit sweet when stuff other video pieces come out about him that weren't really finished or weren't approved back in the day as a way to remember him so it's going to be weird but i think for fans just to love what he was about and what he represented it's going to be great to have these uh, projects that were worked on for so long kind of see the light of day and i think one of the best ones obviously to come out recently has been these um louis vuitton skate highs that he's basically put out and this other one called the lv skate um and obviously this the, the high i'm not necessarily a fan of but i think it's a good evolution from whatever model that he originally released i think he did really well in terms of taking a pretty basic silhouette in terms of an athletic basketball shoe um shoe with you know 80s references elevating it to a sort of luxury level without making it look kitsch without making it look cringe without making it look too try hard because that's what i've always hated whenever luxury design brands decide to kind of tap in to sneaker culture or streetwear they always take bait models and just put their logo on the side of things i remember that famous lawsuit between Karl Lagerfeld's name tech brand RIP to the GOAT and New Balance when he basically made a copy of the New Balance 574 and just slapped a K on the side instead of an N. It's like, come on, I mean, you're Karl Lagerfeld, you've got to try harder. And again, I know it's not him designing it. It's probably when it comes to sneakers on that level for such a big brand, it's probably been outsourced to flipping 10 million different studios and whatnot, but or interns are designing it. But still, you'd want to see a luxe sort of 
interesting interpretation of what a sneaker is. I think the best one of recent times, I think, again, I'm sad because mine broke and crumbled, was the Balenciaga Triple S. I think that was a kind of great way to sort of take a what you deem to be a normal sneaker and literally elevate it by giving it five different soles and making it this exaggerated, gigantic beast of a thing. And um, it worked for the most part because, you know, that shoe was super successful so much so that loads of brands copied it. And I think Virgil did the same sort of thing with those highs that he first released. I forgot what the names are, but this is good little elevation on it. But also, obviously, the piece de resistance are these these lv skates they look like a mix between an es a dc and osiris you know from back in the day i remember there was this website called um i think it's still around there's a website called chrome ball incident do you remember that website chrome ball incident it was a website where they used to upload scans of like old magazines from back in the day and sometimes in the scans you would find like people wearing crazy cool trainers let's see if someone that i recognize let's look at jerry not jerry Sue. there's not really someone that drops here let's look at gino ianuichi and let's look at who's a good let's look at reese forbes the people that actually wear six shoes right and usually you'd see in these kind of scans there'd be pictures of them wearing crazy trainers from back in the day that obviously people don't wear too tough now like look at those those are fcs i think maybe fcs i'm not too sure you'd get really crazy shit they'd be wearing in terms of sneakers that remind you of the good old days right oh no a good one would be josh Kalis actually look he's wearing adidas's campuses yes if he's got josh Kalis on here yeah it does because he's gonna have some absolute steppers um this is what this is reese forbes see what shoes he was wearing here you know you could always see some crazy shit that they put on back in the day but crumble incident i used to check this out all the time in terms of you know reading old or old interviews seeing all these cool pictures look at these reebok classics are they he's wearing a fucking hell i think reebok classics are like cls or whatever they're called so you got to see really interesting shoes let's look at the josh Kalis one this is going to be good because he's always stepping look at those I, I think these might have got re-released actually those dcs i'm pretty sure a lot of these calices got re-released god damn look at the pop on that absolutely mad guy but yeah it kind of reminds me of that era do you know what i mean that's what it kind of reminds me of. i'm not going to lie so yeah these look absolutely flames of course this black and yellow sort of colorway with these sort of new bucky accents it looks like on the side and this kind of weird you know carbon fiber-esque tip at the midsole with the mesh and the leather and also like the fact that they haven't put the lv sign that they put on these basketball highs on the side or these were on the high eights they've kind of adopted this little uh leaf um emblem that would you know if you know you know that's instantly louis vuitton especially with the little buttons on the heel so you know what it is because i think that lv sign wouldn't have really fit really that well on this shoe so I like how you interpret it a bit different, but, and then also for some reason, it's got double laces, which is cool. It reminds me a little bit of those Bad Bunny Adidas's that came out a while ago, those forums that all had the double sole that made them look like a really chunky old school skate shoe. Right, is it? I'm thinking of the right one, right? I'm thinking of a D3 or Osiris or something. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm thinking of. Cause that's what the love, the L'Envant um, skate shoe is based on too. Cause I think these are coming back. I've seen some kids deciding to buy these again um and the wheelies oh look at them with a gum sole Oof, that is a tough shoe and obviously asap rocky did something similar with these oh yeah look at some of the exaggerated them to make it look crazy big but they they are really massive it's a shoe that you have to really get used to kind of wearing in terms of a day-to-day -day step oh yeah remember hundreds did a pair that is a hundred pair isn't it yeah hundreds did a pair also anyway um let's go back to them the other colorway is flipping popping um, this sort of white blue colorway is one of my favorites i definitely go for these two if i had to purchase and then they've got i think a creamy colorway as well which is nice but these are definitely the two uh big ones so what a great way to you know to remember such a great man in virgil abloh with these kind of recent designs that were that are probably due to come out next season um again like i said it's probably bittersweet for his family and friends because maybe he showed early iterations of these to people when he was making them Maybe they contributed to the edits or whatnot. And then you're seeing them in real life. It's like, damn, do you know what I mean? This guy is actually gone because he's not here to promote them. But, you know, still, they look absolutely banging and a great way to somewhat, uh, f you know, mark the legacy of him going out, you know, because essentially streetwear, this is the origins, isn't it? Skateboarding, hip-hop, culture and all that malarkey, graffiti. 
and these shoes are essentially all in one I, of course they're going to cost you know 700 million pounds but at this point it doesn't really matter in it if you want them you'll get them if you don't you probably won't care there's no idea on date it's probably going to be next season i'm assuming some guy called elliot cox is the one they uploaded it so big up him for sharing and hopefully we see these very soon but yeah these are absolutely banging these two especially oof absolute fire flames absolute fire flames i think what else we talk about here i think that might be it for now right yeah that might be it let's leave it there for now that is it for now don't want to hold you too long and whatnot Thanks again for tuning in to the Agassiz Zero Show episode number five. Was that five four seven? I think I said. It's been a pleasure to have your company. As per usual, if you like what you see, you like what you heard, do the damn thing and help me out with all the silly, you know, media metric things like subscribe, all that good stuff, rate, blah blah blah. You know the vibe. Don't need to keep reminding you too tough. But yeah, an amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. As I mentioned previously, I've got a live stream coming up where I'm going to be DJing, playing a bunch of tunes. So if you like that kind of thing click the link um down below in the des description that'll take you to the youtube page where you can leave it in the background and it'll basically come on automatically at 9 p.m on friday if you want to hear me play some tunes then definitely check that out and yeah apart from that take care be safe and all that and i'll see you guys very very soon peace <laughs>